So how to turn your hobby into a small business, like I have. Turning my artwork into products. Things not to do and things to do. So I'll be able to tell you how I started my little small business and it all created and stemmed from my passion for art. So welcome to my home studio. I'm Tracy and today I'm gonna to share how I turned my hobby which is a passion into a thriving business from the comfort of my own home. So it all started actually with a simple passion, something I loved doing in my spare time, which was an art therapy as I had cancer back many, many years ago. And uh, for me, it was creating beautiful work that really helped my mindset. But it can be anything for you, crafts, baking, photography, you name it. So your hobby is really something you already enjoy. It, it's what makes it easy to stick with and, and that's why it can turn into such a good business. So start by working out what you're good at and what others actually might want to buy. And then once you know what you actually want to sell, then your mindset shift will happen. Your hobby is now a product, but don't worry, it doesn't take the fun out of it. It just means that you can share your passion now with more people. So it's really simple, really. You just need to go online uh, to the Australian Business Register website and apply online. It's really only a few minutes and it's free. And once you've got your ABN, you're pretty much in business. So don't forget to get your insurance. I went through Amy, especially if you're selling at market stalls. Uh, this protects you and your products and it's a legal requirement in many, many places. Next, I think you should start small. You really don't need hundreds of products. Just focus on a few that will represent your best work and then start with one line that you know that people will really like. It won't be so overwhelming. So then once you have your products, like you've already been making things for your hobby, then you can start working out if you want to do markets or pop-ups and get it out there. That is the first way I actually have really built my business. And that was by doing the markets and pop-ups. So your presentation is really, really important, especially for your handmade items. So, you know, a great product that's beautifully packaged and then set out is a lasting impression. So I always like to have a, a like a practice at home. Um, I set up tables, I get my products out, I do a dummy run virtually of how I want it to look. And if it looks great and I love it, then I know that the customer is going to love it as well. And it really, really helps you to sell a lot more products. So once your product is ready, then you can really start selling. Whether it's on an online platform, um, like your website, Etsy, Shopify, whatever you want, or at the market, you bring your passion to the world. I always find the markets are a great way to actually connect with your customer face to face and the online store gives you more access to more of a global audience. So it's about finding the right balance for your business. And now the bookwork. This is actually something that you need to try and sort out as soon as you start. Just buy yourself some sort of an easy analysis book you know a money column it's got 10 columns i think this book and i just put the categories at the top and then put down every receipt i'll write the receipt in where it's from and then put the price under if it was blanks or whatever it was and tally it and then at the end of the book i'll put in the income so i'll just quickly go through this is a bit old but i'll just go through um you know, you've got your bank card statements, you've got um, everything from your website, you've got all the things from your Etsy if you have Etsy or your Shopify or whatever you have and keep it together. And I just buy these plastic 
sleeve things that I put the year of the tax return and put the receipts in and I might get around to writing them in the book later if not it'll happen just at tax time but keep it all together and don't lose anything and it really really helps you just keep focused and stay on top of it all and just for the record I am 56 years old I'm living with stage 4 breast cancer which I have been for a few years now and I also never did university or really studied in anything to do with business or art really. I did workshops, I've Googled and I've YouTubed and that is how I have actually learned how to run this small business of mine. And it has been a hard road, it's not easy, but it is so well worth it. So I run a small business called Tracy Bartlett Art and I've really only started to rebrand myself and get myself out there in 2022, my own art, and had to learn how do I print this? How do I print my own artwork? So a lot of research. Um, Canva is an app that I use, which is really good. Uh, I use Inkscape and that's where I put the image and then can size it. So then around, I don't know, the middle of 2021, I suppose, I really looked into the sublimation side of things as well and watched a lot, researched a lot and got myself a Epson EcoTank printer. I think it's a 2720. It was just a normal printer and I had to learn Google, YouTube again, took all the ink out bought the sublimation inks and then transferred them into the normal printer and turned my printer, another printer, into a sublimation printer. Then got the, pa the paper, you know, the tape, and I had a Cricut Easy Press back then. That's all I used was a Cricut Easy Press. And off I went, started to practice and learn on all different sorts of products and just kept on experimenting uh, all the time. Made a lot of mistakes, wasted a lot of um, paper and a lot of inks and oh you name it, I did it. But eventually learned how to do it with a lot more confidence now. So turning the uh, hobby into the business doesn't happen overnight. But with a lot of passion and planning, it is totally achievable. Remember, your unique touch is what sets you apart. So lean into what makes your work special. And if you love doing it, just keep on doing it. It really is something that it's not like a job that you have to trudge along to and work for someone else. It's just a, such a different feeling. You're your own boss and you have a passion. So if anything, you tend to be a bit of a workaholic. I know I am. I tend to have to make myself stop, have a drink, you know, have a break, do some other things and then get back into it because I just love it so much that I can do it 24 seven. That is a little bit of a trap, but you know, if you love something and you're doing it, it makes you happy. And I think that's, that's what's important is that you're happy. So two years on since I started and I can hardly keep up with my stock now. I have help from a mum who packages a lot of my products which frees up my time to do more work and then I have my husband that also helps me with a lot of the market prep and supplies and displays. Um, asking for help is very very hard. It can also, it almost is impossible for a passionate creator to ask for help as you know I think sometimes I'm a bit of a perfectionist and and it's hard to ask for help but you have to learn to accept it when you start to get a little bit more further on and start to be more more busier in your business and you need that help um, so that you can continue to run it at your best optimum way so yeah don't be afraid to ask for the help. Okay, well, if there's any questions that you want to know, leave them in the comments. I'm really happy to talk to you about 
anything that you may want to know. Um, and also let, let me know if, if you've only just started yourself, your own hobby, small business from home, what it is and how is it going? I would love to know. I think we all need to share what we have learned more with each other and um, that helps everyone to learn and, and work together. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you know, the usual comment, subscribe, like and all that stuff uh, if you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you in the next one.